over the past century, but accelerating over the past couple of decades, we've seen the, the emergence of a kind of global data field. The planet itself, natural systems, human systems, uh, physical objects, have always generated an enormous amount of data, but we didn't used to be able to hear it, to see it, to capture it. Now we can, because all of this stuff is now instrumented. And it's all interconnected, so we can have, actually have access to it. So, in effect, the planet has grown a central nervous system. So there's about a billion people using the Internet at the moment, and that's you know, set to grow to probably two billion in the next couple of years. And we, we think that's quite a lot. But over the last ten years, I've been looking at devices being linked up together using networks, so little sensors on things. You know, these temperature sensors and traffic sensors and flow rate of water and how much electricity or transmitting data. It won't be long, and it may even have happened already, that there's more things on the Internet than there are people on the Internet. That's really what we mean by the Internet of Things. Then you get this sea of data that you just drown in, literally. And there's this triangle that's been quite well documented called the DIKW triangle. That's data, information, knowledge, and the tip at the top is wisdom. The D at the bottom is a sea of data, and when we get this data back home and start doing stuff with it, we apply intelligence to it and transform up that stack. So we go from data into information, information into knowledge, and then glean some wisdom from that. And that's really what it's, or the analytics part of our Smarter Planet story is all about. But the, the ideal day, I guess, would be that um, I, I wake up in the morning and my alarm clock went off at the right time because it had looked in my diary to know when my first meeting was and had backtracked which ferry I need to get and therefore which, what time I need to get up. The bathroom heater would have been on for half an hour before that time to, uh, to make the bathroom nice and warm. And I'd know that the temperature had been freezing overnight and therefore that my ice was going to need to be scraped off my car so I need to leave the house five minutes earlier. And then I'd be getting a notification, perhaps an audio uh, announcement in my car as I drive to the ferry saying, oh, the ferries are running five minutes late, so you know, no need to rush, just take your time. All that stuff is being handled by autonomic systems, of little agents looking out on my behalf for the things it knows I want to do, you know, just making me aware of what's going on so that I can plan my day accordingly. So a system of systems is really what emerges when you start to link these things up. So the fact that you've got isolated systems for example, my house on its own, um, with its energy monitoring and the water monitoring and the detecting if the windows and doors are open, that kind of stuff. It's a system, certainly, but it's not a system of systems. Um, but if you start to think about the, the power grid, first of all, the appliances negotiate with each other. So they say, OK, guys, Andy wants all three of us to operate, but it's going to be bad for the grid if we all go on at the same time. So now suddenly we've got systems talking to each other, so sort of acting smarter because they know about each other, which overall makes the entire system more efficient. There are more human beings living in cities now as of last year than ever before in human history, and that doesn't look like a trend that's reversing. Uh, for every four text messages that a pedestrian sends while walking down the sidewalk, um, the sidewalk she's on is, is sending an equivalent amount of data. There are sensors all over the place, um, certainly in the water main. Um, they're registering blockages or not right beneath your feet. Taxis are, you know, um, broadcasting their position and, and fare status back to dispatch. Trains and buses are updating their locations in real time, which people are reading on that street corner. A matrixing of services creates a more resilient thing. And, you know, we can let a water main blockage speak to the road signals above it and do something quickly before police can get there. Soon enough, uh, you know, we will just expect to be told exactly when the bus will arrive. You know, look at that complex set of relationships among all these complex systems. If we can actually begin to see the patterns in the data, then we have a much better chance of actually getting our arms around this. That's where societies become more efficient. That's where more innovation is sparked. When we talk about a smarter planet, you could say that it has two dimensions. One is to be more efficient, be less destructive, connect different aspects of life which do affect each other in more conscious and deliberate and intelligent ways. But the other is also to generate fundamentally new insights, new activity, new forms of social relations. So you could look at the planet as an information creation and transmission system. 
And the universe was hearing its information, but we weren't. But increasingly now we can. Early days, baby steps days, but we can actually begin to hear the planet talking to us. 